Well, thank you so much for the uh, warm welcome introduction. This amazing panel here and this amazing event by Change for Media. Uh, I would just like to start with something so programmatic summit. Like it's still evolving in India. How much would you agree with this in India specifically? Like, have we started kind of adopting it? more mainstream as a part of media buying process yet or it's still kind of in process there? Well, 14 years ago, when I was, actually 17 years ago, I should say, I keep forgetting these numbers, uh, I shouldn't be. Uh, 17 years ago when I started my digital media journey, to be honest, it was bought, still in some shape or form, still been bought uh, and sold uh, like on an I.O. base. Like, I want to buy a space on some website newspaper, TV ads, and so on. Uh, fast forward many years, uh, programmatic took place wherein automation of buying and selling of ads. Now, is it really ads that we are buying in a programmatic space? Is it, uh, I would say, more sort of an audience uh, that we are buying? We're looking for the audiences which are more relevant to the buyers in a real time. Uh, so, not really buying blanket, audiences or media, of course they are available, these audiences are available in media. Uh, previously marketers and just because of that, the whole idea behind having this uh, programmatic is to collect data, uh, collect data. Marketers previously did not have had enough data to plan and work on the campaigns and the forecasting that they wanted to work. Uh, marketers didn't have access to the data they planned, forecast, and place media effectively. Uh, it has now transitioned, so because of programmatic, it has now transitioned into how this media can be bought more effectively. And that's the topic of omni-channel. So how we can leverage uh, programmatic in a new omni-channel digital system. Uh, sorry, a bit of initial monologue, just I want to set some uh, context uh, before we move further into this. I, I I want to give an opportunity to each of the panelists to go ahead and kind of just share your sense on this. Uh, maybe you want to start? Sure. Uh, I think uh, so. We're, we're talking about a few buzzwords here, right? We're talking about programmatic. We're talking about omni-channel. Uh, so, what do these mean effectively, and what is changing? And what has changed already and what is changing in the times to come. Um, I think uh, programmatic today, uh, so to me programmatic is all about the ability that a marketer has today to reach out to its consumers, uh, to reach out to the consumers of the brand in a more targeted, targeted relevant and effective manner. There is more data that is available today than it ever was both from a, uh, when it is available and what is available. So from the times of TV and print where data would become available only in say a month plus or two months post a campaign was launched, today a marketer knows in a week how the campaign is performing on a certain platform. That's an opportunity, that's a complexity but it's a huge opportunity because you know how which asset is performing and you have an opportunity to optimize it further, change the content, uh, target in a different way. Uh, so that's a huge opportunity to be latched on and the way to latch on to that opportunity is to be really on the toes, analyze the data and keep figuring out what is working better and that is what leads to more effective campaigns because you have the ability to analyze that data so much better. The second area is that you have the ability to uh, really uh, identify the audience more sharply. So all the different brand funnels that we talk about in terms of the conversions from awareness to trial can be so much more effective just because you're reaching out to a more relevant audience who could be genuinely interested in your brand, in the category, in the need that you are talking about. So you're more relevant and versus uh, a, a, a more demographic audience which was bombarded with a certain TV advertising, no matter whether they were interested in that category. So whether somebody's buying a home uh, or not, everybody's bombarded with a home loan ad, right? So those are not the days today. Today it is more relevant and hence the audience is more interested and so it leads to a better conversion. Uh, 
the third i think area that we are talking about today is omni channel so what is omni channel really is it about making sure that because my competition brand is uh, also talking on 10 platforms let me also be available on 10 platforms uh, i think it is about identifying what is the journey of your consumer so what is the what is your what is the day of your consumer like what do they do in their day which platforms are they interacting with and on those among those platforms which ones are relevant to your brand your category and then be present on them that's what omni channel presence is all about so i think maybe in a over simplistic way but this is how i see programmatic and omni channel coming together amazing thank you so much So adding to Ritu's point, I mean, uh, programmatic, uh, omni-channel, it's all well understood by everyone in this room. Uh, a po point from this morning's uh, keynote session uh, was about advanced omni-channel. And uh, advanced omni-channel, of course, is talking about platforms like CTV, programmatic digital, who more addressable, uh, non-traditional, you can say, like in terms of digital. So those are new aspects that are creeping into your omni channel strategies and they will uh, maybe in the future shape up to a bigger scheme of things in the ecosystem, right? Uh, but when we talk about omni channel, it's no longer just mobile desktop. It's also your programmatic digital folks, CTV, wearables and other uh, devices that are now part of the ecosystem and easily accessible through programmatic advertising. So that's one way of seeing it as well. So I think uh, I would go with that one that I, I agree with Ritu and it's all about a set of one. So we used to create these user sets and cohorts but I think it's a set of one. Every user is unique. Every, uh, every user you are talking to needs to be addressed in a very different manner. And for that matter programmatic is what, will, what helps you in doing that. I would also say, uh, to, so we work a lot with influencers, so influencers getting the content generated and then working towards delivering it using the channels of programmatic advertising is something that would uh, make it more relevant uh, and that's what we do for our own brand and also for the brands that we work with because we are on both the sides. Uh, how the things are shaping up, I think. Uh, just listening to the last session as well, I would really say there are new opportunities that are coming up uh, with the advent of APIs uh, and what all we can do with APIs. I mean, cookies are going, but APIs are there. There are UIDs that are there. So unique identifiers, there, there's a lot of things that are there already uh, in programmatic to actually help us as brands and as uh, uh, clients to navigate our way and reach the consumer and talk to them. I think that would be good. Thank you. A few things I would like to bring to the attention of the audience. And I'm going to use buzzwords, but defining some of the categories that are underlying the changes that have been happening and that are going to accelerate in the near future. What is trust? We are establishing a mechanism of connection between brand, brand messages, and audience. In that connection, what is the vehicle that we can trust? One, two, is transparency. We are in an era of cookie going forward. We are in an era expecting the uh, behavior, I think, uh, trans privacy. I think we heard in the previous panel we talked about that. What users are willing or not willing to give the information about. Some are totally okay with because they're ingrained in the behavior, the way we share our data for convenience and for usage to Google to live on. Versus uh, the universe of what's happening on the rest of the open web. So trust becomes very important. The third element is uh, audience. Uh, okay, audience uh, and um, the users. The thing is, today we are multiple audiences at the same time, at any given time of the day and night. We mentioned and we touched upon the fact that you know the demographic targeting and the demographic approach to. I would like to find that uh, in the next ten minutes, 
mom interested in that specific pharmaceutical product that we need to buy right now doesn't really exist or it's kind of a little bit of like, yes, you can do hyper-targeting. The question becomes who we are in that environment of trust at any given time. Because we are reading articles, we are browsing the web, we are on Facebook, we are on other social networks, and all of us are different facets of our personality over the course of the day. So we are more or less of a buyer, more or less propensity to learn, more or less propensity to just entertain ourselves more or less of the time. So how, when are we? And in that environment, then comes programmatic, in other ways, but programmatic being the topic today, where all these elements have to come together. So trust, transparency, and then a characterization of audiences, which is more granular, more uh, fluid, I think that uh, you mentioned before that you know within a few days you are able to understand the performance of a, of a campaign because we are able to measure in some channels transparently and build that trust where we are able to see the dynamism of the audiences that engage with different creatives or different messages from uh, the advertisers. And problematic is the environment, right? If properly used and properly addressed that creates those elements that are play for the brand to be able to engage with their audiences and discover new audiences. Thank you so much, Daniel and Leslie Panelists, giving your thoughts on uh, programmatic and using uh, omni-channel way. Right, so I uh, just also want to add upon a couple of things which is also a myth, right? It's not really a myth, but like really truly is being or had been used in the past, which is multi-channel approach while every brand and advertiser has been using multiple channels to reach their audiences or their users, but they have been pretty much in silos. Like the whole idea of having, uh, reaching out to users by but measuring them holistically. Like if Pranjit or Ritu is that person available across all these channels, am I going to reach? Only channel is the way to go where you will be able to identify uh, how uh, a user is present and tell that story which Ritu, Ritu mentioned across the day, follow that user journey as a brand and a brand marketer to follow that user across journey either onto the airport where a DOH ad is shown in the taxi on your phone or listening to your music or reading a news article and finding something very relevant what you have browsed through, through contextual and so on and so forth. Uh, if there is more specific bottom of the funnel following that journey to reach to the audience towards conversion and so on. Uh, which, which brings me to a set of questions that we have and a lot of, I think, audiences we have as well. At the time of immense digital transformation that we talk about, uh, where minimizing wastage is imperative, how can you future-proof your only channel campaign and make it truly unmissable? I mean, if you can start. I think, uh, so, <coughs> the, the first thing is that only channel doesn't necessarily mean I have to do a tick mark on every channel that exists. Uh, when we start thinking with channels, we will not go right. When we start thinking with the brand and the consumer is when we will be able to identify the right channel. So, what is the brand strategy objective? and hence, and who is my consumer, what are they watching, what are their experiences, and that leading to the identification of which channels are right, what is a part of the consumer's journey while experience the category and the brand. That should lead to the identification of the channels, and with, with a lot of clarity on which channels are meant for upper funnel or driving really the reach, awareness, and uh, consideration for the brand, and which channels are playing the role of, say, impact uh, uh, for an early launch of a campaign? Which channels are doing the job of a closure and uh, the lower funnel in terms of a sales or a lead generation, depending on what the brand's, brand's objectives are? In addition to that, when we look at it from the content side, it becomes very important that the content is designed for the channel versus the approach of I have this particular visual, let me just copy paste it everywhere and just adapt the size and put it all across. 
because when we take that approach, we are not leveraging the the channel to its best ability. That put together with the right channel selection will lead to the first set of efficient plan. Then I think as we as we launch a plan and keep analyzing it, so I may launch say, 10 pieces of creative on a particular uh, uh, channel. And then over the next 15 days, I identify okay, which pieces are working better, which ones are not, and I can pull out the ones which are ineffective, amplify the ones which are working more effectively, and that can really improve the ROIs further of the campaign. So that there is a journey with the right content. I, uh, I don't know if it answers the question. Uh, Absolutely. I, I think very, very, very important point that you mentioned about using how, how smartly that you identify which channel are used for it. We have seen a lot being practiced uh, in the past where in the adoption of the creative to use for one platform and then either with the time limitations or whatever could be said, if it's properly identified and used, it would lead to better usage of this only channel that we talk about. Uh, maybe Olin, you can add yeah, so more in context to a creative deal, like Ritu said, like your messaging is important. What I've noticed uh, with clients is they're not scared of adopting a new technology or putting into place, you know, any of the technology you talk about, right? It's the fear of getting the creators. They come like one hour before the campaign or it's mostly, uh, like Ritu said, any panel, just put it up there, right? It doesn't work that way and uh, you know, when they say, oh, this doesn't work for me, maybe it's the creative and not so much the platform. So only channel is not just your marketing channels, your devices, right? It's beyond that. It's also seamless messaging. It's also how you put that creative on any of the platforms you select. Um, you know, so I, I would like to request clients and agencies who are here to not fear getting creatives or getting them made as, you know, adapts for that media. Uh, and I'm sure if that is done, uh, your only channel ca uh, campaign results will come out in the true sense and not just like a filler of sorts. So I would say here it is also the landing link that is very important. You know, you've done all the communications right, but at the end of the day, day where the consumer is landing and you've used a lot of communications and if the landing page doesn't talk about it. Somewhere you would just lose the connect. So that becomes very important. You're doing customization as I totally agree with Ritu. You're doing customization at your content level, creating multiple campaigns and trying to understand. I would say just go a step ahead and actually take it to your landing page as well and create multiple of those so that you know the journey completes. You know, you were talking about apples in your uh, in your ad, and suddenly the person lands and sees mangoes. So, yeah, somewhere that breakage. Uh, so, a lot of times we've seen clients do this mistake. So, you know, they are they're just optimizing their their just the ad copies, and uh, I always go back to and uh, go back and tell them that look, your home page does not talk what you are talking in your copies and. You are expecting a conversion. You are you are complaining about the bounce rates. Why will the customer not bounce? You talk to him. You made him so many commitments, but when he landed, those things are just not there. So get him those things. Even if, if it is that one thing you're talking about, take it on your landing page. Create those customization because that will give you conversion. So we work on last mile conversion. So that is very important. The purchase is very important. And this will get you purchase. Daniel, would you like to add anything? The programmatic and the omni channel provides the environment where you can do all sorts of optimizations on your cost, on your scale, on your um, uh, marketing funnel, no question about it. We're talking about the creative, creative that are taught through by humans or humans in AI. You put them in video creative, you put them across uh, the OTT and, uh, and uh, uh, social media and then uh, web properties and so forth and you see how they operate.
So in other words, you kind of you have a testing environment. You have your assumption, you have your brand attributes, you convert them into video messages or dis display or other sorts of like media messages, then they are in those environments. Programmatic enables you in a way to test and scale with immediate results, with measurable results. Okay, it converts on that OTT uh, both from a KPI perspective, so cost efficient so forth, as well as engagement with the audience. It converts more on that channel versus the other one. So you have this constant environment of learning, efficiency gains from a cost perspective, efficiency gains from engaging the audience. I add that, and I mentioned before, is that the discovery component. Now, it's a little bit not counterintuitive. We are operating at massive scale. In our companies, like other companies in India, are operating at massive scales. We're talking about billions of uh, transactions a minute. We are talking about engaging with hundreds of millions of users a day. That, again, as I mentioned before, we are different people at any given moment. So, it's not humanly possible, that's why the uh, AI is going super fast, to be able to understand. So we need to basically, the, the, the AI, we need to enable the AI, in this case powered by programmatic, to be able to give us some uh, super quick learning and then distill what works in terms of efficiency and cost, in terms of engagement of my, uh, my brand attributes um, from a video <coughs> display into an environment. So in that sense, I, I challenge a bit. We are beyond the channel. channel. We are brands engaging with audiences which are dynamic in an environment. And the environment is mobile, web, OTT, a different type of sites, uh, social media, uh, uh, both World Garden, if I think about Shercha for Josh, and so on and so forth, or OTT environment that we consume, and again, we are different. So, in that sense, programmatic and omni challenge, it's the it's the path that takes us forward beyond thinking as compartmentalizing channels. I'm going to do this here and this here. Yeah, of course, we are humans. We need to figure out, okay, I need to break down my budget, and I need to go here and here and here. This is a must buy, this is a must buy, and that's a must buy, this is a, my uh, environment for test. If I take it backwards in programmatic and omni channel, I'm actually can think as a brand uh, to, I have my brand attributes, I have my objectives, I need to do my sales, I need to work on my consideration, I need to bring a new product to the market, <coughs> and then I have my assets, creative assets, and my messages, I'll put them out there, <laughs> and the system, with both AI and humans are going to optimize and give me quick learnings and of course results across the, the different APIs. Just to sum it up, uh, thank you Dan, just to sum it up, you virtually proof your omni-channel campaign to make it truly unmissable by identifying the right channel, the creator and the media through which you want to reach out to your consumers. Uh, which leads me to the second question is how can programmatic support uh, media communications as we talk about creative, uh, to engage consumers, accelerate growth, and drive sustainability. Again. I, think, I, I, I think I touched upon this a little bit earlier. Um, so uh, what I was talking about earlier is, is, is about how do you uh, reach out to consumers in a more effective way. I think th th this question sort of also adds an aspect of sustainability to it. Um, so in, in, interestingly at Bayer we think of sustainability in two, two areas which when I joined was very interesting to me and new to me. So one is sustainability from the aspect of reaching out to consumers who are underserved. So that's one aspect of sustainability. We very often think about sustainability only in the context of environment friendliness. So that's, that's the other aspect of sustainability, but it was very interesting to me when I joined and I learned that the two aspects of sustainability. One is, yes, how do you be more gentle to Mother Earth? And the other being, how do you reach out? As a, so as a company which is about health and hunger, so we have a vision of um, hunger for none and health for all, wherein sustainability has a pillar on also reaching out to underserved consumers. So Recently, an example of you know how this 
on this aspect of sustainability, actually, programmatic can uh, can work very efficiently. Uh, so we recently created a campaign which is being tested only in uh, one city of UP, so in Aligarh in UP. Uh, the whole objective here was uh, to reach out to consumers uh, who are really underserved and have very limited information with respect to healthcare. Now, uh, pain or headache is one big uh, category we play in with, with Saridon. So we started the journey with that and we created this um, mobile-based uh, 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 sort of uh, interface which is as simple as making, giving a missed call and uh, receiving a call back, but it's all based on, it works using the voice space solutions from Google. And the way we tried to reach out to these consumers was leveraging a lot of data from, uh, uh, you know, the targeting was done using uh, their uh, cost of their smartphones, what sort of apps were they interacting with. So how do you uh, fine tune and actually reach out to an underserved consumer? How do you identify an underserved consumer, reach out to them? Uh, creating an uh, AI-based solution, so the solution will keep learning it even assesses, uh, so the interaction is not in, you know, dial one, dial two. It takes in the voice input of the uh, of the of the person dialing in, and can even assess over a period of time uh, whether the voice is stressed or uh, it's sounding in pain, and start recommending solutions based on that to the to the person. It even offers solutions with respect to, uh, so we created certain modules around, uh, uh, so you can hear a joke, you can hear a, a, a solution to a financial problem. And what data today helps us do is that on a weekly basis, we are able to see, okay, how many people are calling in? Which piece of content are they liking more? What are they picking? And hence, Going forward, you can create more content like that instead of uh, or optimize what you're not. So in the first one week, we identified that there were a huge number of people who were calling in while dropping out in the first 10 to 15 seconds, the moment we told them that uh, if you want to continue further, you have to say a yes because buyer wants to use this information to target you later. And everybody sort of said, okay, data, bye bye. You know, we don't want to go further because we don't want to be bugged. So we identified that and we took a call immediately, we said, okay, what is more important? Is it important for us to collect this data and use it for remarketing re to them later? Or is it more important for us to build this platform, trust, let, let, if they don't want to say a yes, let us just go forward with this, let them uh, go further, uh, engage with us, and that's more important for us. So we changed it in the first one week and we said, okay, let's just go ahead without asking them to, you know, forcing them to say yes and then move forward. If they say yes, it's okay. If they say no, that's also okay to engage at this point of time. And the response immediately changed. So, you know, multiple things I play here that in one week you were able to get that data, change the content, plug it back in, go back to the consumers again, identify which piece of content is working, which piece is not working, optimize that further. So that's really the power. And another in interesting aspect to me here was very often there's a bias that, you know, programmatic, digital, it's all about this premium end of consumer segment. This is a program which reaches out to the, to like a tier three town uh, and a, a much lower socioeconomic strata. So digital today is not limited to that because the moment you think mobile in a market like India where data is almost free today, you can reach out to pretty much everybody using programmatic. And that's the aspect, I think, of sustainability that programmatic can bring in. Uh, for a very, very long time, it has been very costly <coughs> to reach that end of the consumer in India. It's very expensive, both from a media and from a distribution standpoint. I think what programmatic can really open up and enable is reaching out more effectively even to this set of audience and open up the next, uh, probably the next million or the next billion consumers in India. Absolutely, couldn't agree more and thank you for sharing this amazing example which absolutely uh, 
makes sense for programmatic as well because programmatic is all collection of all this data feeds in. Now it's more AI powered, uh, which self learning itself and that to usage of this in your omni channel way. So which channel is providing you the best? So usage of this data, collection of this data centrally across various other platforms. Now when we talk also about data, there is something that comes to a lot of brand marketers or clients of mind is attribution. Like how do you then attribute it? If this data, I earlier spoke about and to talk about like users, if they are uh, segregated in different channels and you, have, you are unable to unify them, where do they belong, then attribution becomes a big problem. Then you figure out like post, post view or post click data and bottom of the funnel and so on. With omni channel, you would be able to resolve that problem where my users are coming from and where do they, which channel brings more efficiency in terms of attribution, either from a, from a your awareness campaign, top of the funnel or concentration. And if you want to bring this further down into your conversion matrix as well. Uh, have you, from a channel perspective, then you can add from a channel native perspective, is there any anything that you want to add on in terms of uh, attribution? There is an operational side and the technological underpinning. We have a pixel that enables to understand the, the, the funnel. And you're all familiar with that. I mean, being operating in this environment, um, programmatic testing at scale is enabling you to understand uh, uh, the user journey in a very, I go back to the topic of uh, transparent way and attribute that and that's an operational component of uh, measuring the effectiveness, uh, the point I was making before, of that specific channel when you decide either an experimentation mode that you put through the uh, programmatic uh, platform and your channel strategy money into that specific uh, vehicle in the option that you have in programmatic, you measure it and then you have your output in terms of, okay, it's cost effective or not, good, and I got this type of audiences to engage with my brand at this level of the KPI, I got them uh, for consideration, I got them for conversion, I got them on for sales. That's one aspect. The other aspect goes back to um, the other side, which is uh, the what you have mentioned, by, way, by the way, in a fantastic example where um, you want to proceed here, give me the consent so brand uh, buyer can uh, uh, access uh, and use your data for remarketing. And you made a decision with the rest of your team to say, you know, what's more important? It's the engagement of my brand and my message and our attributes with the audience that I'm actually discovering. And you said, right, we saw that we couldn't do this a couple of years ago, now we can do it. For programma through programmatic, because of mobile access and, 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 and access to people. So, that brings the other piece, the attribution and the transparency back to the user. In our environment, uh, we operate on the open web, so we are present into pretty much every website that uh, you can name in India on the premium, uh, across the, the premium inventory, across news and other, and other, and other typology. We provide uh, back to the user the transparency of being able to decide to which, with which type of uh, brand message in the form of video and other display and motion ads and others to engage with. So you have both ends, right? From an operational perspective, we use the technology, pixel and so forth to be able to understand the attribution model and connect it to programmatic, you can connect that plus with the efficiency of the other channels you are using or TTMs. But there is this other element, which I think is going to personally think going to grow a lot more as more and more consumer conscious will make decisions, yes or no, to engage with the brands. And Programmatic provides that. The transparency and I would, I would call it attribution, we use this word to measure the effectiveness of what we do. But there is a measurement that it's individual in how the users understand and make decision consciously on engaging with a specific uh, with a specific brand the channel and this is it's going to be more and more and more and more valuable absolutely uh, super important uh, Ankita or Mandel do you want to add anything on this point? 
So I think with programmatic, the example that I would have is that uh, we created uh, we uh, we created this uh, whole set of new products, uh, D2C brands, and we try to experiment and we try to do it in a tier four kind of a market on mobile. And what we found was so we were also serving them Amazon and Flipkart and those standard companies, HULs and payers and PU, uh, all, all of them. But uh, surprisingly, the, the tier 4 uh, market was more receptive to the newer products. You know, products from Arata, products from Mama, products from... Uh, and we could, we could uh, so our major budget was going into, uh, into the main lines uh, of Amazon's and Flipkart. But we actually changed it the other way around. So instead of promoting the Hindustani and Ilyuga product, we sh shifted it to these new experimental brands, mm -hmm. which we all we had this bias that you know this is not going to work in Tier Four. This is only going to work in Mumbai, Delhi, or Tier One or metros. So this perception, we made an immediate shift, and the so they were open to experimentation. And only because of the power of programmatic, we could understand and break our biases, break the myths that we had, and actually understand that you know even a person sitting in uh, Muzaffarnagar or a very small city like Badot is okay to buy a product which is Arata, and which you and me would okay would know that it's organic and it is. It is homemade and things like that, but they were ready to do that. So that was an eye opening for us, thanks to programmatic. Uh, so I'm going to uh, sort of speak about consumer engagement, which was the previous question, and also about attribution because they sort of go hand in hand. Uh, because I represent, um, you know, a device or a medium that's more to do with the masses than to do with a single individual. But when you look at it in the holistic uh, picture can reach out to individuals as well, right? So uh, talking from the consumer engagement perspective, uh, you know, not many people see programmatic digital out of home as something that will let us, you know, say how many of us here in this room have actually engaged with a digital billboard. But in today's day and age, there are so many ways to do it, especially the simplest way being including a QR code. Uh, we've gone a step further with a brand, an OTT brand, I don't want to name it, um, but they've gone ahead and they've done social to digital. Uh, sounds uh, crazy, sounds out of the box, but it's been done, wherein a brand, uh, you know, sort of published their tweets in real time on digital billboards and got the traction, the much needed attention, right? So consumer engagement doesn't essentially mean from a single device, it could be cross device, cross channels, right? And uh, when it comes to attribution, of course, there are different ways to measure the success of your campaign. Um, when it comes to digital out of home, uh, it could be something uh, in terms of, uh, you know, if there's a sales uplift that has happened, if there's purchase that has happened, right? And we normally track this back. Uh, we are heavy, heavily relying, of course, on uh, the client data because they do the study, they do the basic research, and it's done in silos uh, at the beginning. Like a lipstick, okay, we did PDOH and this is the uplift we got, but eventually they also measured it against other mediums and uh, more often than not, uh, when you use programmatic DOH, it serves as a complementary medium to your other channels as well, right? And we've seen uh, uplifts in awareness, we've seen purchase intent uplifts, so we've seen this across uh, various brands. Yes, the attribution is a little um, rudimentary as compared to other digital channels, but uh, soon we'll also be having a seat on the big, uh, you know, uh, on the dinner table, you know, right now we're just there watching uh, all other mediums, but um, we'd like to, I mean, of course, I'd like to say that uh, branded studies are real, even in programmatic digital on uh, and that's the current attribution model in place, uh, but soon enough, I think, uh, will be included in all of the attribution models that currently exist in the system. Awesome. Uh, just in the interest of time, just kind of summarize a few pointers that we mentioned and leave the audiences with this thought uh, with omni-channel uh, uh, usage of programmatic with omni-channel. Way, uh, you're doing storytelling, as Ritu and the rest of the panelists spoke about. Own storytelling that you are getting the creative, knowing the channel where they exist, and telling the story that you want across different channels. 
uh, there is a huge time saving that's happening. That you are in silos, not jumping between multiple channels, but you have one one system to look for multiple channels, and then you utilize and optimize which one where you find your users. And basically, all everything is in your control, which gives amazing time saving. Then you have your media efficiency. The efficiency that you'll get, okay, channel A works for me, or it has worked in phase one, probably phase one and two is not for me. So there is a efficiency that you get. The last but not the least is probably data aggregation. Now, you spend, you spend money, uh, dollars in this paid media. How to get this data back to build this, understand the user more, either to for a future messaging of the campaign that you want to do, or want to engage even further to enrich the data, the first party data. I mean, earlier sessions I have spoken about and now the bird, buzzword about deprecation of cookie or device ID is going to go, ID field, everything going to deprecate. In that environment, how do you build your first party data to future proof yourself in this dynamic, ever changing environment? Uh, any last minute thoughts from the panelists? We'd love to hear. One thing I can say on first party data uh, is that it's a reality which we, we definitely need to accept that there is a need to build first party data. However, it is very, very important to not rush into it and actually really think deeply and put together the strategy that you have as a company and as a set of brands or brand towards collecting first party data before we actually jump into it and start collecting some data. Because that pre-work is going to go a long way in terms of when you actually start using that first party data. Just jumping onto that bandwagon of let me just start collecting some data and put it somewhere and maybe one day I will use it may not in the end turn out to be very effective if where you want to use and what do you want to you do with that data wasn't thought through before you actually start collecting the data. I, I couldn't agree more. I mean, I can give you a bit of joke that data is so massive that uh, nobody can keep up. Not the Unilever of the world, the, the biggest company of the world, yes. At the moment, Facebook, Google and others, us, we don't collect first party data the way we have built private, private, private information. We have first party data, but not private information. It's actually kind of a myth. We passed that stage. A couple of years ago, when things started, and the big companies, OK, no, we shut down this, close, close that, close this. Close. Every big company, oh, I need to have my data. And of course, we have uh, loyalty programs. Every big company has their own data. But think about the only claim that I'm going to have a, a mass of five to six billion users or a billion users in India. It's a myth. So I could more that. So in a way, let it go. We are past that stage of the data is so massive and it's growing so fast that it's more important, as you rightly said, as we rightly said, the experiment. And programmatic is enabling us to actually do this kind of experimentation and then get the results, both in terms of efficiency of KPIs as well as the learning of how our brand attributes work in this environment now interact with all of us. Um, so, I mean, Italian said, let it go, let go of the data. <laughs> I mean, what more can I add? Uh, but, uh, like, you know, uh, data is overused, data is, you know, always spoken about, and the data that we collect is sort of bombard our consumers with irrelevant ads, messaging, right? Like Ritu said, if you don't have a plan of action, uh, don't just collect data so you can keep retargeting consumers. I think brands need to be a little more patient and understand how best to utilize data because that's the kind of uh, audience we are now catering to, right? We don't just want retargeting, we want a little more personalized messages, a little more relevant. We need a break from the ads we see. Uh, if it is relevant, if we have that kind of data, please go ahead and leverage it. But like, like I would cite Daniel completely, let go of it if it's not relevant. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I think the experimentation is the key and uh, if we, uh, be it the small sets or larger sets, I think uh, if we start with the smaller sets and we try to use that small bits and as I always as I always say that I want to focus on that one set, one set is one person. So if you speak to that one person, you build a conversation with that one person and programmatic can help you do that. 
I think that your job was pretty much done. Awesome. With that, uh, thank you so much for the esteemed panelists and thank you everyone in the audience to listen to us. Thank you.